so anyway, the the song, the original like thing that was the inspiration is actually this, but not this version. I don't know how many of you have played. Um, this was I first heard this in Little Big Planet Three. I believe they used it in yes. Like crazy a clothes he wears tan shoes with pink shoelaces a polka dot vest and man oh man he wears tan shoes with pink shoelaces and a big panama with a purple hat band and I, actually, I like this version better but i mean it, it's four people singing i, I like you know trying to either replicate the voices for that or getting a group for it like that was just gonna that wasn't in the cards but there's actually a different version of it which is the original version which will sound much more familiar very quickly <laughs> Love him truly. He's not good looking. Heaven knows, but I'm. This one I'll play the whole thing of, or without the thing of the slice. Wild about his crazy clothes. He wears tan shoes with pink shoelaces, a polka dot vest, and man, oh man, he wears tan shoes with pink shoelaces, and a big Panama with a purple hat band. So getting the whole, you know, the lyrics of the triple cheese thing was kind of tough. <laughs> He takes me deep sea fishing in a submarine. We go to drive in movies in a limousine. He's got a Port Liberty and a 12 foot yacht. Number 12. <laughs> ah, but that's not all he's got. He's got tan shoes with pink shoelaces, a polka dot vest, and man, oh man, he wears tan shoes with pink shoelaces and a big Panama with a purple hat band. <laughs> Doodly had a feeling we were going to war, so he went out and enlisted. And also, like, I thought this song worked better because Cornette's kind you know, obviously is a boomer. He would obviously know this song. Jordan, fighting for a buddy, landed in the rig for raising such a storm when they tried to put him in a uniform. He wanted tan shoes with pink shoelaces, a polka dot vest, and man, oh man, he wanted tan shoes with pink shoelaces and a big Panama with a purple hat band. Now one day Doody started feeling sick and he and, and that was part of the thing too is that if you listen to the lyrics of both, I feel a good song parody is one that you don't just get a song and just completely rewrite the lyrics, you integrate the parody stuff into the original. So you can actually hear parts of it as well. So you're gonna hear a lot of like callbacks to the original. Decided that he better make his will out quick, he said. Just before the angels come to carry me, I want to down and write and how to bury me. I'm wearing tan shoes with pink shoelaces, a polka dot vest, and man, oh man, I gave me tan shoes with pink shoelaces and a big Panama with a purple hat band. <laughs> Purple hat band. So after that, I went and I, you know, the, this germ of a crazy idea popped into my head. And I wrote all the lyrics out, but obviously I knew I couldn't sing it. So I went on Fiverr and I'll pull up the uh, person's profile here because she's been, she got a lot of uh, praise, which I was happy for. Uh, Natalie, I believe it's Nakare. I mean, like, look, like she's been, uh, I mean, she's got some pipes on her. <laughs> you call me again, drunk in your bands. What a 
fucking boy. And just to give you some other context too, I did this back in August of last year. So it's been a while and I kept sending in, you know, the thing to the driver. You can't just like send it in. Like it's just an email box. It's not like a formal submission thing. It's just a thing to go through and do it. So, you know, kept getting passed over, whether it was just them playing other songs on the podcast or a bunch of weeks. I just didn't play it. Like there was the last two weeks. I didn't play any song just because of like certain circumstances, because they had to do like a special type of show, or it was running too long anyways. Or even other ones have come up, which I always felt like if a song was, was if I thought it was funny, I wouldn't get too upset, and my thing wasn't played. But you know, it, like it, it gets discouraging. And I'm sure she had forgotten about it too. She had, uh, I don't want to pull the thing up, I just don't want to pull up my Fiverr account on here. But, um... <laughs> So the last thing that I sent to her, which was, this was back in August on the 12th, I said, hey, just want to give you a heads up there on the song. I sent it, unfortunately, I haven't played it yet. Hopefully that'll change soon, but they have lots of people sending submissions, yada, yada, da. I can submit it on the, that being, well, this isn't a uh, DSP song, right? Doesn't, aren't they, I only heard about that recently. I don't really follow that podcast. Not that I have anything against it, I just, I'm busy, usually. And... You know, it is what it is. I mean, if they're just taking any song parody, then fine. But if they're looking for a DSP thing, you know, there's, you know, it's not what they're looking for. But anyway, so then she contacts me uh, yesterday in the, uh, that wasn't yesterday. This was, maybe what, anyways, on this here, February 6th. Oh, no, sorry. I was reading the wrong thing. Excuse me. Maybe I'm not that. Yeah, on the 5th. I remember she says, hey, you, I just heard the program because a lot of people were reaching out because I laughed a lot with their reactions. Remembered how much fun it was to record it. Your idea was amazing. People are loving it. Thank you for making me a part of it. And I'll get to some of the uh, fallout or feedback after that. But let's go and play the actual song now, or at least the edited thing that I did of it. Of this is them playing it. This isn't like the thing unheard jim for asking for us to get out of here or asking for a song a little bit of both this one was sent to corny drive through at gmail and just get more context too like this thing came out like a couple of days ago like even i think it came out on like friday i didn't get or thursday i didn't get around to listening to it for a while i didn't hear this part of it i kept listening to parts of the podcast so the other thing too is like these podcasts sometimes can go like four hours long and this one was at least over three hours, I think. So I kept, you know, listening to it, you know, over time. Well, let's see here. Let's see how long this was. Yeah, this one was nearly a three hour show. So it took a while to listen to, but. Come from your beliefs and Natalia Nicare. I'm, I'm sorry, it. what? <laughs> the band, I guess, or the group what? or the person is your beliefs. And there's Swami. And the what? singer is Natalia Nakar or Nakari. Not exactly sure. Well, here it is. But I should mention, too, like the way that I got this. So while I did, so I hired her and then because I wanted her to sing to this track. And there's actually a um, website that does this. Let me get the, I might as well throw them some credit. Not that I expect them to do it, but. Oh, give me one second here. Let's see if this website's still around. Yeah, this thing. 
uh, vocal remover. This wiped out the uh, the lyrics amazingly well. Like there was like no bleed over from the original over to her work. So highly recommend if you want to go and like don't bother trying to find if you ever are in a situation like mine. Rather than get like a karaoke version, which normally has like different instruments and isn't doesn't quite sound as good, just try this out first. Now I've got a guy and his name is Horny. He is my guy and he makes me horny. He's one of the great modern hills, but I'm wild about his fast food meals. He gets triple cheers. Hey, go ahead, Mexicano. I don't care. <laughs> With extra G is pickles, onions, mayo, and mano man. He gets a side of some large friend first and a big cup of spray just to wash it all down. So anyway, so I was I lost my point when I was going to everything too. So I'm listening to this throughout the days, right? Then finally I'm walking my dog with my wife. And we're going out because we're stopping because there's a friend that we know who our, our dog really likes. And as we're walking up the stairway, I'm listening to the end of the podcast. And I hear the thing of this next song is from Your Beliefs. And the door opens up. I'm like, fuck, I can't listen to this right now. But I'm like, holy shit, finally, after all these months of submissions, it finally went through and I had to stop. And I'm just sitting there, you know, listening to this conversation or, you know, trying to like, you know, do pleasantries as this person. And I'm like, oh, my God. Fine, after all this time, my thing is finally being played. And then I went and I played it, or I got really shit faced and then played it on stream. Ooh, he takes me deep sea fishing in a hotel room, he gets a sour belt. Right, instead of deep, deep sea fishing in my submarine, deep sea fishing in a hotel room. Just like a sonic boom, he does a helicopter with his 12 inch cock. <laughs> but that's instead of taking me going on his, tw on his 12 foot yacht. <laughs> Food orders a lot. He gets triple cheers with extra G ears, pickles, onions, mayo, and man oh man. He gets a side of some large French fries and a big cup of spray just to wash it all down. This is not what I expected. Now, now and also, that's everything too. Is like I stripped out like eighty percent of the um of the saxophone solo because i'm like this doesn't add anything to the song that's just i just found a point where i could cut it off and then keep playing when he had to go and drive 180 miles so he saw a dairy queen and it was full of smiles but he landed on youtube for reasons such a storm when they cast the workers in a uniform and the original lyric is um hold on let's go back to that so he went out and enlisted in a fighting corps, but he landed in the rig for raising such a storm when they tried to put him in a uniform. He wanted yeah, see, like, it still uses a lot of the original, you know, the original song. He wanted triple cheers with extra cheese, pickles, onions, mayo, and man, oh man, he gets a side of some large french fries and a big apple spry just to wash it all down. Okay, so probably well, I should pull this clip too. This is funny. Uh, one second here. Yeah, here we. This is it. So this is where this next part comes from. I mean, any final thoughts on like Jim? I've ignored him for years, and it's on and on. It's my my personal enjoyment at this advanced age to remind everybody at every opportunity that he's a liar. It's freaking wrestling. It means nothing. I will live to piss on his grave, even if I'm in a walker. My wife already has instructions. She's out of the will. If she doesn't get me there, if I'm not ambulatory, I'll find Vince Russo's grave and I will piss on it. And there will be a picture of that hanging on my wall when I pass away. And hate is a hell of a motivator. <laughs> the king of hate definitely agrees. I, want, I actually have plans to go and cut this thing up and upload it to YouTube. But I don't know if, if all the shit that we're showing, if we or even, I know it's going to be content IE claims, whatever. I hope it doesn't get blocked. We'll see. 
So anyways, that's where this next part comes from. My wife already has instructions. She's out of the will. If she doesn't get me there, if I'm not ambulatory, oh, I'll find Vince part. Russo's grave and I will piss on it. And there will be a picture of that hanging on my wall when I pass away. Hit and I triple cheese with extra G is pickles, onions, mayo, and man on mine. He gets a side of some large friend fries and a big cup of Sprite just to wash it all down. It all down. My asshole wants to suck cock. <laughs> what the fuck was that? I specifically put that part in just to get a pop, specifically out of Brian, the, the other voice. Anyway, here's what that looks like. My asshole wants to suck cock. And yeah, that was from uh, yeah, Kayfabe Commentaries, History of WCW, 1990. When he, when he, and he'll explain what it's from. <laughs> was that at the end remember that was that famous vanessa del rio line <laughs> from a 70s porn movie <laughs> oh my god who i'm sorry i made fun of their names now your beliefs is the group and the I, i'm sorry i just whatever i feel like uh bad about well oh, i'll get you a uh more direct give me one sec here we exactly could pronounce the singer's name. That was an amazing vocal, verbal performance. The, the writing, the material, the, the <laughs> execution, the whole nine yards. It sounded professional. I'm surprised it was sent in yes. to us. It <laughs> says if you do end up playing it on the podcast, please. I mean, I just talk about like, I, I realize I, I, th this is about as close to a episode of The Incident as you're going to find here. But like, honestly, just listening to this stuff, like after between all the work I put in between the writing the thing and finding the artist, her putting her thing in, paying the money, and then uploading it, and just constantly waiting and waiting and waiting for it to finally get through and then to get like this ultimate vindication or just, you know, just have them loving it. Because that was my, that was a fear. Like, I had a lot of confidence in the song, but you know, you never know. Like, I was like, oh God, what if this thing fucking bombs? Or what if they hate it? And now I'm just going to have to crawl into like a fucking, Whole edit us as your beliefs and Natalia Nakar. Let's spell this N E K A R E. That was that I have to say, big ups to Brian for like spelling the name out for people. Well, I encourage everybody to look them up. And then, well, we're that not, was incredible. What a singer she is. That was pretty good, I have to say. I have to say. And just hearing And I feel good for her too, just so she gets, you know, so many props for that too. Like, here's the ever fucked up thing too. Like, I mean, this is arguably probably one of her most successful songs. You know what I mean? So this should definitely go on her like demo reel. <laughs> People are hearing, like, you know, <laughs> he does helicopter with a 12 inch cock. Female voice on this program is jarring to begin with, but a talented one at that. Well, with that, we're not topping that this week. With that, not the drive-thru is closed. Not a chance. No chance in hell. All right. Would not you a... like me to do my helicopter for you, Brian? With your 12-inch? The only thing I thought of maybe doing, because part of the thing that got me inspired to that lyric was, this was around the time when, the, um, er, when Dark Side of the Ring, the new season, premiered, and they went over the plane ride from hell, and they talked about how fucking rick flair got drunk was walking around in only a robe and was doing helicopters if you know what that is well <laughs> anyways it was him doing helicopters and that was the inspiration for that lyric so i was gonna originally after that line insert like a um rick flair woo, but you know just didn't happen i probably should have but you know cock yes I've got it right here. Let's hear how it sounds. I borrowed it just for just such an occasion. I got to take it back later on this afternoon. Where are Spencer's gifts? I've got gifts? one here. Yeah, they've got them at Spencer's now. They've got extensions, or if you just want to get one, they've got the whole 12-inch ding-dong. Well, of course, you can get more of our ding-dong. Yeah, then they were giving their plugs and stuff.